So teaching's called Disciple or Christian. And um, so I've, I'm an evangelist and I'm sure most people here are as well, or have done it. And I go out on the street all the time and I come across many people as I'm out on the street and, and, and I will ask them, um, do you believe in God? And many people will say, yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. I'll say, all right, how, how, how are you a Christian? And they'll say stuff like, um, oh, I got baptised as a baby, um, I've got my Holy Communion, I go to church on a Sunday, and they'll say all sorts of different stuff. I've got a cross, I wear a cross, look, and they'll get the cross out. Look, I'm a Christian, I've got a cross on. And so I'll say, all right, cool. But um, one thing that might surprise you is that Jesus never, ever used the word Christian. He never made any Christians, and he never used that word and the Christian was actually a derogatory term that was used 11 years after his death and resurrection. And if you want to check your Bibles, you can check it in Acts 11 and uh, starting at 26. So the people in that time used to like mock, mocking the Christians and say, oh, they're the Christians, look, them Christians, them crazy Christians. So it's actually, that term Christian is like a mockery term. So I want to ask, if Jesus didn't make Christians, <coughs> Then, does anyone in here know what Jesus did make? Any, any volunteers? Disciples. disciples. Yes. Jesus made disciples, not Christians. And so, a good example of disciples in the Bible is like when Jesus went and he went to like um, call the twelve, and he went to Matthew, the tax collector, and he said, and, and a disciple is someone that follows Christ. And good examples of that is Jesus went to Matthew, he said. Matthew, come follow me. And he said, Andrew, come follow me. And so he says to all us here, come follow me. Whatever your name is on your name badge. If you just say that out loud now and then say, come follow me. Steve, come follow me. That's Jesus speaking right now. So we're called to be disciples. We're called to follow Jesus. And another example was a, a rich young ruler that was in the Bible. And he went to Jesus. He said, Jesus, what do I have to do to inherit eternal, eternal life? And Jesus said to him, um, keep the commandments. And he said, oh, I've done that since I was a kid. He said, right, well, go get all your possessions, sell them all, and come and follow me. And the guy was a very, very rich man, you know, and he, he didn't want to do that, you know what I mean? And a lot of time, people don't want to, they, they want to be a Christian. They want to have the joy, go to heaven, and this, that, and the other. But they don't want to follow. And many times, people will not follow. And this guy didn't follow. He didn't want to follow and we don't know if he did, you know what I mean? We just don't know, but he didn't. He went away really sad. And so when we look at the comparison between Christian and disciple, you know, when, when you say Christian, you, a million things come into your mind. But when you say disciple, you think the people that follow Jesus. And so there's a whole different emphasis. And so if we look in the word, we'll see that disciple is a very common word. And it comes up in the Bible almost 300 times it's used in the Bible, like 290 odd times. But in the, the word Christian is only found three times depending on what translation you look at. And so a good way to describe what a disciple actually is, a very good way what we understand is an apprentice. A disciple is an apprentice. And so if, if when I'm, I was an apprentice, I don't know, we've, have we got, probably got people in, in here that have been apprentices. But I, I was an apprentice plasterer. And, you know, when I first went to become an apprentice plasterer, I had no clue about plastering. I didn't know nothing about it at all. Not a single clue. And I went there with no knowledge at all. But over time, you know, as I was spending time as an apprentice, because an apprentice is somebody that walks alongside someone and then they learn the skill off that person until they can do it themselves without, without no, they don't need no one to spoon feed them anymore. Like now, I'm a plasterer now. I don't need my boss anymore. I don't, in the early days when I first left him, I used to ring him up and say, oh, how do I do this? How do I do this? And he'd give me some tips and then, you know, so that was in the early days, but now I don't ring him up anymore. I don't need him anymore. I'm training loads of others up now. I've trained loads of plasterers. And so a pr apprentice, he will stay with his boss for a certain amount of time and then eventually he's expected to do it himself. And in Luke 6.40 it says, a disciple is not above his teacher and when he's fully trained he will be exactly like his, street, his teacher. And so in, in the beginning of my plastering apprenticeship it was difficult, it was hard, I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't, I want to plaster on, I didn't go straight in and start plastering walls on the first day. 
you know, there's no way I could have done that. I did like the basic little jobs, learned how to do a mix, learned how to do simple stuff. But still, you know, it was expected that one day I'm going to plaster these walls, you know, that's the whole idea. And so, you know, I, I didn't do it straight away. But imagine this after three years of me being an apprentice plasterer and still not being able to plaster walls. Would that be acceptable? It wouldn't, would it? It'd be no good, would it? And so I'd, I'd have failed my apprenticeship. If I spent three years with my boss and didn't become a plasterer in them three years, then I'd fail my apprentice. And so um, imagine like if I was given a book and in that book it told me exactly how to plaster. And I read that book for three years and I was going to work but still never ever done anything what that book had told me to do. You know, that, that would not be a good thing, would it? It'd be a bad thing, wouldn't it? But when we look in churches, so often, we, you know, in churches they think that they need more teaching and, and more books to read and more stuff like this. But, you know, I, I don't know about you guys. I've got books upon books upon books at home in my, in my um, bookcase thing. We've got like book things, haven't we? And I've got tons of books in there, what I've never read, which I'm probably never going to read. Because I've just got to, you know, when everyone's giving you books. And you just think, oh, another book, another book. I don't need another book. I've got one book, the Bible, and that's all I need you. And that tells me what I need to do. And so we don't need more teaching. We don't need more conferences, all that. We don't need that, yeah? We think we need more than that. We don't. What we need is more obedience. We need to obey what the book says. You know, when you, when you look at it, yeah, the book tells us clearly in there that, that we need to go and, you know, make disciples of all nations. You know, Jesus commissioned the 12 and then they had 72 and then he told them, go into all nations and make disciples. He never said make Christians that sit in church on a Sunday. He said, make disciples that make disciples. And he said, teach them to do all the things I've taught you. And so Jesus taught them to heal the sick, cast out devils, do all this stuff. And then, so that's what we should be doing because they, they look like him. They was his apprentice and they became like him. And so if we're going to be his apprentice and take it serious, we'll be like him. And so, you know, as, as we, you know, in, in, in the early days, it might be hard, yeah? And you might think you can't do it, but as you start to get the experience, you will grow in confidence and faith is like a muscle. And it's like, the more you use it, the stronger it gets. And so, you know, I just want to ask like, what type of jobs do people do in this room here? What type of jobs? Support worker. Support worker. Ground worker. Ground worker. Sparky somewhere. Sparky. Sparky, back there he is. <laughs> so, you know, imagine if you've been doing a Sparky for years and you still can't change a light bulb. It wouldn't be good, would it? It's not good, is it? So, but we see people have been sat in churches for 10, 20 and 30 years and they still never baptised anyone, never healed the sick, never cast out a demon, never been used. They don't look nothing like Christ. I don't know what they look like, but they don't look like Christ. You know, and I'm not like mocking them or all like that because I, I want to see them wake up and become like Christ. Because if God can use me, or my wife was the shyest person in the world, and he's used her to do miracles, then he can use anyone, you know what I mean? And so it's like, some of us are more easier for us, like like me, you know, I find it easy to like, you know, I just, I just find it easier, but some people are shy. But my wife's shyest person ever, she's been used mightily by God. So there's hope for all of us, definitely. So, how, how many of you here have wanted to be involved in ministry, but, but never done it? Hands up. Have you? Yeah, but you've never done it. But how many times, right, when a new member comes into the church, you just send them to the pastor, or you send them to the elders, or you send them to someone that, that knows a bit more, you know, like, oh, that, I'm not qualified, I, I can't do it, I haven't been to Bible college, blah, blah, blah. This, that, and the other, which Jesus never sent anyone to Bible college, by the way. <laughs> um, so, so many a times you just palm it off onto the elders or the pastors, and all the pressure goes on them, and you don't take no responsibility, and you don't you don't stand up and be counted. But what Jesus wants is He wants you to stand up, say, "No, I I want to get involved. I can do this because you can do it." Because the thing is, yeah, 
We're all equal in the eyes of God and we can all be used the same. It doesn't matter. There's not specially anointed people. You know, we all have the Holy Spirit. And if you have the Holy Spirit in you, the Bible says, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive power to become my witnesses to the ends of the earth. And so all, all you have to do is believe in the gospel and have the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, these signs will follow them that believe, not them that are super anointed from America or wherever, <laughs> them that believe these signs. They will cast out devils. They will speak in tongues. They will, they will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So the only qualification is to believe and obedience. And so, you know, we might not look like Jesus now, but that's okay. Because as we grow, we will become more like Jesus. And in my early days, you know, I was giving out hats and gloves and scarves. I was running around Bradford giving out hats, gloves and scarves and telling people that Jesus loves them. I didn't, I didn't look nothing like Jesus. Jesus never gave out hats, gloves and scarves. I mean, he might have fed the poor, but, you know, he, he didn't do that. And he, I did nothing, I didn't look nothing like Jesus, but I was doing the best I could at the time. And as I grew and learned of strong people, because I prayed God bring people to me, and God connected me with strong people, brought strong people like Steve and many other people in my life, Jack and loads, loads of other people in my life that he's brought in that helped me. And in fact, the man who actually preached the gospel to me is sat at the back there, John, Scottish John, and he used to preach the gospel to me. And if he wasn't doing his best, what he could do, which was, he was preaching the gospel to me, and thanks to him telling me, I used to tell it, think he were a nutter. I used to argue him on bus. I used to like, he used to go, you go and go hell caving. You go and go hell caving. And I used to like, shut up, John, you're nuts, man. But do you know what? He preached the gospel to me, him and another, and because he was being obedient to the word, you know, I'm here today, and God has been using me mildly, thank God, to his glory. And so, you know, as we grow, we'll come more like Jesus, but it's okay to make mistakes. It don't matter if we make mistakes. You know, if you go back to all that, in the early days, yeah, the disciples yeah, couldn't cast out a demon. So, they, you know the story in the Bible, to, to try to cast out a demon, they couldn't get it out. And how did Jesus respond? He wrote a book on the reason why they couldn't get... No, he didn't. He didn't. Right? He just rebuked them and said, you unbelieving and perverse generation, how long do you have to stay? He basically, bring them to me. And he brought the, the guy and just cast it out like that, straight away. No problem. But then we read later in the book of Acts that the disciples, everybody got set free from the demons and everybody got healed. And so, you know... If we look there, we can see how the disciples have grew. And you might believe that you lack boldness or you are fearful. But if you look here, how the disciples grew from not being able to cast out a devil, not even understanding what Jesus would try to teach them. They didn't have a clue what was going on. But later, they realised and they grew and then they were used mightily. And they ended up getting mad. In the early days when Jesus got crucified, they all run and hid. But they didn't do that at the end. They were getting murdered, slaughtered, and they didn't. so they grew in faith. And God can give us the faith to even face death. And so it's like, if you think about the jobs that you've done in your life, and where you were first got there, you didn't have a clue how to do that job. But then once you learn how to do that job, then you become confident. And I'm sure, who's confident at their job now? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Everyone's confident at their job. Was you confident in the beginning? No. no. You won't. But you are now. And it's the same with this. You know, you, won't be, you might be nervous and think, oh, I can't do this, I'm not qualified, blah, blah, blah. But as you start to step out in faith and start to do it, your confidence will grow and, and, and you'll become more bold and fearless. And it's, it, God will just give you the, what you need, you know what I mean? Like, like, you'll be able to even train others. And so, like... I remember the first time I prayed for someone. Do you remember the first time you prayed for your, someone, anyone? Or if you've ever prayed for someone? Do you remember the first time? Because I remember the first time. And the first time I prayed for someone, nothing happened. And they didn't get healed, you know. I was running around praying for people for three months. Laying hands on people. And I was saying, I believe if I put my hand on you and pray for you, you're going to get healed. Put my hand on prayer. And says, it worked. I went, no. I was like, oh, right. fair enough. Walked away. <laughs> this one thinking, oh, is that nut job there? You know what I mean? Prayed for three months without seeing any miracles at all. And my friend said to me one day, he said, Kevin, it might take years. I said, yeah, and it might happen tomorrow. And the very next day, it happened. I'd seen the first miracle and someone got healed. And it was powerful. 
And I'll share a testimony about um, um, the first time I ever um, grown someone's leg out. You know, the miracle when someone's got a leg shorter than the other. And I've seen this guy who I know, and, I, and God gave me a word of knowledge and I just went straight to him. I said, what's wrong with your leg? And he was like, no, what's wrong with my leg? And then anyway, we went back and forth a bit. And in the end up, he said, look, I don't know how you know this. Yeah, he said, because I've never told anyone. He said, but one of my legs is shorter than the other. I said, right, well, God's going to grow your leg out. And he, he just laughed at me. He just mocked me and just laughed. He said, you are off your rock. You know what you're on about, man. I said, look, come in park here. We need park. I said, get in park here now. I said, God's going God's gonna to heal your leg right now. Watch this. So I, I'm proper nervous. It's very early in my walk. I've never done this miracle ever in my life. This was, I was petrified. My heart's beating out my chest. I'm thinking, oh no, all these doubts coming and it's not going to work. So anyway, it goes in park, finds the bench, sits him down. And I picks his legs up and lo and behold, there's about an inch at least, an inch out here. So I'm praying and I, look, I looked and I, I was like proper nervous. I just prayed. I said, God, I said, in Jesus' name, I command this leg to grow right now. And I looked at him and nothing happened. And he's just looking at me like, this guy is crazy. He's lost the plot, man. And so I'm just looking like a complete fool, right? And I'm like, oh, no. So I, I literally shouted at God. I looked up at this guy and said, God. I said, you, I'm doing my bit. You need to do your bit, you know. And so I shouted at God. I said, go on, God. And then I just came back down. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command this leg to grow right now. And it just moved a tiny little bit. I seen the tiniest little movement on his leg. And that was enough to spark faith inside me. And I just believed it's working, it's working. So I started praying, come on, come on, come on, come on. And his leg just grew, grew, and lo and behold, it came out slowly, slowly, slowly. And eventually his leg grew out and he got filled. Well, he didn't get filled, but he got touched by the Holy Spirit. And he felt pure peace and joy upon him. And I preached the gospel to him, but sadly he didn't come to the Lord. But, you know, that's a different story. And so, you know, I'm, I'm an apprentice of Jesus. We are an apprentice of Jesus. He healed all the sick. We should be healing all the sick. You know, we need to be looking more and more like him. We can't just say, oh, no, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to just do this, what I want to do. I couldn't do that plastering. If I'm doing plastering, my boss like, right, I'm going to train you plaster. No, no, I'm just going to clean the windows. He's like, no, you're not. You've got to plaster the walls. You know what I mean? So we can't say that either. We have to do what he did. And we need to grow and to become more like him. And then when we fully become like him, then we can go and make disciples as well. And he says, go and make disciples. And praise God, I've been blessed to get some disciples, people I've been encouraging, like this young Jack here. And he's on fire for God. And now he's already gone and baptised someone and got a disciple and teaching them, aren't you, bro, and others. And so, and he's teaching them to do the same. And this is, this is what it's all about, disciples that make disciples. And so I just encourage you to, if you want, if you want to do this, yeah, find some people in your area that are on fire for God, go get behind them and, and go help them and start work, walking with them and then just step out in faith and God will use you mightily. And I just encourage you now. So I just pray for everyone here right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray, Lord. This took a while to drop into my spirit, you know. It took a while. It might take a while to drop into yours. But if you do it like this, you will see results. So I just pray, God, you just, just use these people here, God. Use these people. You change the world with 12 and there's loads of people in this room. So I just pray, Lord God, you just, Holy Spirit would convict them to step out and just be bold and fearless. In the name of Jesus, I pray for them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank amen. you. God bless.